You know, uh, speaking of the Patriots, it kind of brings up a funny subject, and I actually kind of disagreed for once now that I have a new look on it. Uh, Chris Carter was talking the other day, and it was on Twitter and stuff, and he was talking that it was 70-30, and that was probably given, you know, the 60-40 was too much, 70-30 was probably being generous of 70% Belichick, 30% Brady. And I guess when I stopped and I thought about it, it's like, yeah, I understand that because I am on that same narrative where, and that's because of the GOAT situation and the way I look at it and all that, I'm not going to get into that. But I guess I disagreed because it comes down to the things we've learned lately in the few months. Belichick did not have the success he had, even post Brady when he was hurt and all this stuff when he was suspended and he still had success. Prior to the Brady and being able to have a quarterback that bought in and him being able to build the Patriot way and do business the way he does as the head coach and general manager of the team, he still required Tom Brady to buy in and execute that plan for that to extend to the rest of the team. Therefore, it's still to me a 50-50 thing because Without Brady, he doesn't establish the Patriot way. He tried to do it before with the Browns. It didn't work. He tried to do it previous to Brady with Bledsoe, who was, you know, a former first-round pick and already was, had a, a different coach, had, you know, and stuff had drafted him. It wasn't working. So I think that's a little – it's swayed, if you want to be honest and really be just upfront and honest and take all the biases and all the – other arguments and all that crap out of it without Brady Belichick could not establish the Patriot way therefore you have to give Brady 50% of the credit for the way everything is going even if if Belichick is pulling all the strings he was doing that before it took Brady buying in and setting the example over and over again and never wavering even if he was pissed and I'm sure he didn't agree to keep things in that, you know, established for all 18 years, resulting in all this success. And without Belichick doing that, Brady's not going to have the success because he doesn't have the talent that would have required, you know, if he had to play behind an offensive line that Aaron Rodgers is in the 2016 NFC Championship game, for example. You know, so it's a 50-50 thing, and I think it, it, if, you're, if you're up front and honest about it. You know what? To end off on a positive note, who was your top three players tonight for the Packers? I would have to give it up to uh, Alan Lazard, I would say. I, I was very impressed with him. Um, I think just the defense as a whole, because I don't want to really – because there's nobody that was super stellar, but I think, I think as a unit – they showed uh, what you wanted overall as a young unit, kind of, especially not a lot of start, no starters really out there. And then uh, I think I would have to tie between our boy Dexter Williams and Tim Boyle. I really can't pick one over the other. You know, I think Boyle definitely looked like the better of the two quarter, well, the best of the three quarterbacks that played tonight. Uh, just like we had thought it was going to go. And I think Dexter Williams did exactly what we thought he was going to do, even a, even without his starting offensive line out there. And I know it's against backups, but... Do you want to know what he finished with? Go ahead, tell me. 14 carries, 62 yards, averaging 4.4 yards a carry. That is trending in the right direction. And he had a catch for 18 yards. That, my friend, is 80 yards... I don't want to say playing. we told you so, but we told you so. I mean, I know it's preseason, but yeah. not every back does that. I'm sorry. It just, uh, it, you know, not. Imagine if they had Lindsley in there, Blaga, Bakhtiari, Jenkins, and Turner. Just imagine if he had the starting all line there. It just, okay. it, w it was probably, he, he probably had like 100 to, um, it was like 100 to 110 yards he'd probably have all purpose. I really think he would have, if he had them. Actually, I want to switch my defensive unit to special teams because I was damn Ooh. impressed with special teams, honestly, now that I thought about it. I'm sorry. I know that's cheating kind of, but sitting here. Well, no, actually, I mean, no, I, I was going to do the same thing. I was going to put them on my top three as well. Um, what is your top number three? One, number one, I'm, I, I've been hyping them up. 
I know other people have, but just seeing the INT tonight is Kadar Holman. This kid is the real deal. Um, he, for being a late round draft pick, has been showing out. And, and with him and Tony Brown doing well tonight, they, the Packers didn't surrender a touchdown until the third stringer started coming in. And, um, Tony Brown and Kadar Holman, man, uh, they, they look good. Yeah, I'm using them as a combo because, Tony Brown was getting pass breakups, he was making tackles, Holman was making tackles, and they had the INT. I mean, it just, just, to, just really to butt in looked here good. Real quick about Tony Brown before you move on. In the first yes. quarter, I noticed right away he came and flashed from out of screen on a run, outside run, and I know which play you're talking about. on the guy and just showed just complete Olympic speed and then just, I mean, just toasted the guy. And it was like, Wow, yeah, that's exactly what Dave has been talking about and being impressed. He's, as a corner, he can fly, but what's cool about him is he he's a dirty type of corner. Like, he 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 wants to hit. He's, he's he got gets some underneath attitude. your skin. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was nice to see right off the bat on the, at the beginning of the game. But go, go on, Dave. Well, that, I, just that's to, big. I just wanted to well, say no, that, you're, yeah. You're good because that, that's big as a DB to be able to hold up your end and kind of get underneath the wide receiver's skin because he did it in the joint practices. He did it against DeAndre Hopkins, and it's not getting talked about enough. I'm sorry. I know it's a joint practice, but DeAndre Hopkins is the best wide receiver in the league, and if he's out having five pass breakups in two practices against him, that's saying something. And with him performing well, Kadar Holman uh, playing well, I mean, you even have KD and Ento that looked good tonight too. He did not. He didn't look like great, but he looked a decent good. I mean, we have enough depth there at, at our corners. Is if Kevin well, King sits out? There's a caveat, Dave. We I think we're going to keep reiterating this all the time during preseason. The caveat to everything we say is we realize it's preseason, okay? And yes, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna talk negative, but. When we see stuff that we like, we're going to say it because that's just kind of what this is about. Like, you like I mean, like us strapping Kiki and and Gary, and then saying Daniel's is going to get cut, and everyone's like, "Oh no, that won't happen." Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it doesn't have to be popular, and I'm, we're not saying it to be hot takey, but it's like we're trying to be honest here about this stuff. And but it's it is preseason, so the category, it's also the how and why. It's yeah, how they drafted them and why they drafted them. Yeah, exactly. that's a perfect example. My number two, I'm going out to uh, Big Jake Kumaro. Um, look, he deserves it. Just as he looked just as I know it's two catches, 27 yards, but guess what? He literally caught everything that came his way. He was targeted twice, caught twice, and it was beautiful slant routes. He's going to be the Donald driver of the early part of Donald's career if he's with healthy, Rockers. If he's healthy. They, if he'll be – he'll, see, look, I, good thing I have a wooden desk. They just knock on wood. God, don't do that. The, next, um, the funniest thing about him is it couldn't have happened more, more perfect having Ryan on on Tuesday talking about his body lean, late hands, and you guys talk, going through all the small things. Yeah. And then him coming out right away, and I know it's two catches – but in both those catches, if you go watch the replay, he does exactly what you guys were talking about. The the body lean in, the DB can't tell when, you know, he's shielding the guy's eyes from the ball. So he's depending on his hands to signal him when the ball is there. And He's got strong hands. Right. And so his <laughs> so he knows it's going to go in, there. And he, he reaches out and snatches the ball where even the, as the guy is swiping because he notices his hands are coming up, the guy is three inches short of being anywhere close to where Kumaro is making contact with his fingertips on the ball because his body's leaned out. It was just, I guess it just made me kind of laugh because right away I go, I, there's Ryan and Dave. They're probably sitting at home laughing right now. He's doing exactly what they said, you know. So who do you think my third player of the night is in the Packers. Who do you think it is? Uh, your boy, uh, Raven Green. No, I wanted to because I already know how he's able to play. Um, I'm giving a shout-out to the guy that I want to win the kicker job, Sam Pickett. 
And with the kick up. Two for two. Yep, I know, but I just I, Sam standing right there with our our kicker who has made the Pro Bowl in his career, and I believe he's the all time scorer. All cheaper, right, he would be a lot cheaper, but I think it would break Aaron's heart because that's his friend. I know. Then you know what? I'll switch out Sam Ficken and I will throw in Timmy. I got to go with Timmy, man. Timmy is uh, Timmy Boyle. Like we just said earlier, it's not that he. It, it's not that he looked smooth. It's the fact that everything around him looked smooth. That's the thing. It looked like he looked smooth all, it, it all it around. It looked like everybody was confident that he was going to be able to execute and do their his job, so they could be confident and do their job. And even think like everything wasn't perfect. Again, it, we know it wasn't perfect. But he he is had a pass rating of 125 tonight, while Kaiser had a 111. Right, and and I'm sorry, but Kaiser's 111 is kind of uh, that pass rating. Partly is, because is, it's partly because, because of Shepard's touchdown. Tape, right, if you watch the tape, he had a lot of erratic throws, a lot of he had some easy missed throws, like we talked about on the bootleg to the left of Vitali, who he didn't miss once but twice on the same play. Uh, so, yeah, Boyle didn't have those type of plays is what we're saying and again he is he's a stronger he reminds me so much of Matt Flynn when he's out there Matt Flynn could run this offense and people were confident and comfortable but he's actually got a stronger arm and he's bigger than Matt Flynn so it's nice to see finally I think a guy that you could actually see again be there long term like Matt Flynn was where we are comfortable with who we have at quarterback instead of being scared to freaking death all the damn time about the guy that might have to come in if something ever, God forbid, happens at 12, knocking hard on wood. <laughs> you just pissed off your dog. Way to go. Yes, I did. <laughs> but no, man, I just, I think there's so I mean, I wish we had top five lists, but I, I like to do top three because it just shows the special place and, um, there was a plenty of of all around awesome performances tonight for the Packers. We honestly can do top ten list because there was that many. And the one thing I got to say is a team as a defense, we had four takeaways tonight. What did that we lack huge. last year? Take takeaways, away. extra possessions, extra possessions for the offense, even if it's struggling. Extra swings at the bat, you know, up at the plate usually results in something positive. Hey, ESB had a drop before. He had a drop in the drive on the one where they punted. He had a drop, and then he came back and redeemed himself and covered the ball for the freaking um, – had a bounce off him and then covered it in the end zone. Like, the guy doesn't let stuff phase him about St. Brown. That's what I love about him is, okay, he can mess up. He'll go back and fix it. More, it takes him five drops to finally focus and get a touchdown. Moore That's what bothers me about more blockage going on that I don't know. Maybe that touchdown helped. Who knows? We're going to, but I hope the touchdown did something for him at least, because this this is not the kid that played in college that got drafted in the fourth round. I'm sorry, it's just not. He would have never got drafted if his tape and co from college looked like the way he's played over the last 17 months, of, you know, in football. It just, I'm sorry, it's, and I, and I, I'm. I'm pulling for the kid because he is freaking talented to all hell. He just is. He if oh, yeah. if he could get over it, he is a he's got speed, he's got size, he's got strength. The hands were there, and I emphasize were because he's not using them. He is basically catching when you bend your arms, you're like second armpit between your forearm and your bicep. That's what he's trying to catch the ball with all the time. Nobody's ever taught him that, and he's never done that before until he got into the pros. So I, I, I just don't understand it, but I am pulling for the kid to break through and go back to the kid that got drafted in the fourth round that had all that potential and was was thought of that was going to be a monster in with this team and this quarterback. But right now, yeah, he's he's practice squad at best. And it's, that's I mean, also, too, who knows? Maybe that touchdown, like you said, maybe it just unle like unleashed a whole new Jamon Moore we don't even know about. And we're sitting here dogging him. And then, like, I'm not, next, I'm, I am next, not, guys, I'm not dogging him. No, no, no. It's, it's the truth. We it's both, truth, I'm not I am saying, I'm not saying we're dogging it. him. I'm saying we're, like, just the negatives of him. But what I'm saying is, Jay, watch all of us sitting here and just, like, 
say keep calling practice squad, and then it was that one touchdown to make it all better.